Hi there, welcome to BA Consulting Pro and welcome to this another episode of Microsoft Power BI Certification Tutorial. In this episode, we are going to discuss about adding calculated tables and columns in your Power BI semantic model. My name is Ajay Kumar and here's something about me. If you would like to know more or if you would like to connect with me, please do connect with me on LinkedIn. Before we begin our today's video, here's something for you. We are seeking your help and your feedback. Please help us out how we can serve you better. On your screen, right now you can see a QR code. Please scan it and fill out the form. This would take two to three minutes of your time. But with the help of that, we can serve you even better. We can create tailored videos for you and the videos that you are most interested in too. Now, let's get back to our video. By the end of this video, you would be able to add calculated tables and calculated columns to your semantic model. Not only that, you would also learn about the row context and also we would see what are the different ways to add a calculated column. So if this is something which is interesting for you, please sit tight and I'm going to let you know everything about it. If you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you always stay updated with our latest videos and updates. Very first, we are going to talk about what is calculated tables in Microsoft Power BI. Well, calculated tables in Power BI basically are being created using DAX. DAX is data analysis expression. It's a kind of formula language that's going to allow users to create either new table or column or even to perform certain complex calculations in Microsoft Power BI. With the help of this formula based language, we can add columns and tables as well in your semantic model. It's very useful when we create calculated tables because you can use them for your intermediate data manipulations or complex aggregations or even creating tables that combine data from multiple tables. However, this comes at a cost and the cost is the major factor when we do anything in our organization. Basically, when you are using calculated tables, they are going to increase your model storage size and that can be, you know, very time consuming when you are going to refresh your semantic model. The reason is because calculated tables recalculates when they have formula dependencies to refresh tables. So if you are using an import storage mode and then you calculate the table, that means they are going to again and again recalculate and it's going to take time. Now let's talk about the another part, which is calculated columns in Power BI. In certain cases, it happens that you may want to create a column inside your semantic model. However, the best practice is that you always do any kind of data manipulation at the source only so that you have to do minimum or almost no data transformations in Microsoft Power BI if you are working in an organization. But I do also understand that in some cases, when we use Power BI self-service tools, then we are not going to create a data warehouse or database or something rather than we want to do everything in Microsoft Power BI. That's all right. In those cases, you have to be very careful whenever you are creating a new column or adding a new table over there. In this case, what happens, you can use again the DEX functions to create another column. For example, you want to create a month key or you want to create a sorting key over there or maybe you just want to drive another column for example your date column and you want to create a month year column in those cases you can do that and here also you see the calculations happens row by row and that is what we also call the row con oh, and that is what we also call the row context but please be aware about that it also comes at a cost in the import mode because of the calculated column you would find that there is an increase in the storage size and again, it can take a lot of time to refresh your data set. In my past video, also I discussed about what is the difference between a calculated column and a measure. So if you haven't watched that video, I'll request you to go back again and check that video. Now let's try to understand the row context. First of all, what is a row context? Well, as its name says that row, so that means we are talking about the row, how the calculations happens row by row, that is your row context. In the screenshot on your screen, you can see that if I am multiplying sales by quantity, that means I'm going to get my total sales. And then you have to multiply these two factors. So if let's suppose you want to calculate the total sales and you are writing your DEX 
that your sales is going to multiply by product in your calculated column then you would see it happens row by row by row by for each and every one you are not just going to get one output it's happening for individual rows so that is your row context if you are going to talk about the purpose of it then basically it provides you a framework for performing calculations on row by row basis which is simply a row context it also enables you to creation of calculated columns and measures that rely on specific data and lastly if you want to allow for detailed and granular data analysis this is going to be super important for you you should also keep in mind that whenever we talked about row context then row context is also used when a class of function known as iterator functions are used this is something an advanced topic which you can learn more about it iterator functions provide you with the flexibility to create sophisticated summarizations when you are going to do more and more practices or when you are in advanced stage of microsoft power bi development then you would get to know about them too however if you are new over here then we have also created a dedicated tutorial on dax then please do check out the link in the description section i hope you are enjoying this video so far and i am sure that you are going to clear your pl300 certification exam however we request you to please fill out this survey which you can see on your screen you can just scan the qr code and fill it out this is going to help us to serve you in a better way we can create the contents that you would like us to create and we can also focus on the areas where you would like to grow in your career however if you would like to take your career to the new level then please join our channel this would help us to create more dedicated contents for you and also you can take advantage of our tailored contents for example definitive guide to power bi this is a tailor made project based course which can take any beginners to the pro level so please join us today now let's talk about the techniques to add a column well there are different techniques to add a column you can either add directly into your data source which is the best practice always try to do that but i also know that sometimes it's not possible so other two ways are that either you can use the power query to create it where we use the m language or m functions to do it in the second part what we can also do we can create directly in our semantic model using text functions so these are the three ways to add a column into your semantic model now let's go with a bit of demo where i'm going to show you what does that mean when i talked about adding a calculated table or a calculated column right now you can see that i have this sample report over here i'm using adventure works data set so if you would go over here you would see that this is all in direct query right now i'm not in the import mode however this can be changed from here so these are the three modes you would find it in microsoft power bi this can be another important question related to your exam so please keep in mind after that let's go and try to create a new table first you would see under home tab over here you see the calculation group new table new column so we are focusing on these two part so this is the very first part where you can do however if you would like to do in power query that's also possible so you have to go over here under the transform tab and here you would see that i have fact internet sales table where i have only these two column but let me not fact uh, fact internet sales reason i have to go to this fact internet sales table and here i have a lot of other columns so let me find this total cost is over there and if i'll go the unit price i'm just trying to find the columns that can be very useful for us for example let me just do this sales amount and i don't have a quantity over here so i'll just go with the sales amount and let me just see order quantity so i have sales amount and order quantity two columns over here and now i would like to create a calculated column over here how can i do that very first you would go add column under this one you would say custom column here you are going to say total sales amount pq means power query and what you are going to do you are going to simply drag it from here let's say my order quantity so let's go down here's my order quantity and rather than sales amount i'm going to multiply it by unit price so multiply unit price and it's also going to tell you whether there is a syntax error or not and after that simply click okay and now this is going to be your total sales amount new calculated column over here if you would like to create a table over here as well that also you can do you can simply right click and you can duplicate it so this is another way to create another table and i'm going to call it custom table pq 
So these are the two ways that you can create over here your table and the calculated column. After that, you can simply close and apply. It will take some time. So please hold on over here and it's been done. Now, if you would check your data model, there is a custom table PQ and also the column has been created over here. This is total sales amount PQ. If you want to do the same calculation over here, again, of course, you can do that. So you have to select your table over here. Then say I want to create a new column. I'm going to call it total sales again. And here I'm just simply saying that do the multiplication of my order quantity, which is this one, multiply by my sales amount, right? And hit the enter button. And here you can see that I have created this one. And Sigma signifies that automatically Microsoft Power BI Desktop app can apply certain aggregation on that. You can also not use the aggregation. That's all right. Now, if you would like to create a table, you can also do that. So simply come here and you say, I want to create a table for date. So I'm going to say a calendar table. And then you can write a function calendar auto. So calendar auto text function basically going to check all the dates over here and going to return you a table with minimum and maximum date and all the different rows over there. However, you can also specify that when your financial year is ending, for example, if your financial year is ending on 30th of June, then you can mention six under the bracket and then it's going to start from the July. So let's hit the button over here and you would find that your calendar table has been created over here. You cannot see the data directly over here. The reason being we are into the directory mode. However, if you are going to come here, you see the data is there. And why now the data is appearing suddenly over here? Because I just said that you cannot see. Because this table is now being created inside this semantic model. And now you are using a composite model. If you would go over here and you are going to check this calendar table, you would find that over here, which is saying import. So whatever you are creating over here, that would be in import mode. So please be aware about that. As far as we consider the best practices, please do not do any calculations or any of the calculated columns or calculated tables in Microsoft Power BI app and try to do always minimum transformations inside your Power Query, such as you can rename the columns, you can rename the tables, you can also sometimes remove the columns from there. But try to push all of the transformations towards your data source if it's possible. If it's not possible, then you have to find other techniques to optimize the performance over here. You have to optimize your text calculations. You may optimize your other parts in Microsoft Power BI desktop apps, such as the number of visualizations, etc. So these were the best practices over there. And this was all about what are the different techniques to add a column or how to add it, uh, calculated columns over there. With that said, thank you so much for staying tuned in for this video. If you have any question and concern, please do let us know. You can connect us via connect at biconsultingpro.com email address. If you are over here for the very first time, please subscribe this channel and also share with your colleagues and friends. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. In case you are looking any of Microsoft Power BI or Microsoft Fabric training programs, please do reach out to us. We have specialized programs for you. Till then, guys, keep learning and keep exploring the world of data. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube and also you can join us on X. That's it for today. Please stay healthy and keep taking care of yourself. See you in the next video.